Well, that, I think maybe that's the distinction between, it's something like the distinction between that all-encompassing maternal acceptance that's maybe at the core of infant care and the encouragement that's more patriarchal or patristic to develop. And those things are those things are juxtaposed to some degree because the universal love is, well, you're okay exactly the way you are and we accept you, but the conditional love is, no, you have to grow up. When And because we love you, we don't want you to stay infantile. We want you to develop competence. We want you to be not only socially acceptable, but socially sophisticated, productive, generous, and that's all conditional on, well, a very high level of behavior. I was talking to friends to Wall the other day, primatologist who studied chimp behavior, and one of the things he said was that uh, you give female juveniles, chimps, a block of wood that's, you know, about this big, say, they'll frequently carry it around in their arms or carry it around in their back like an infant and, and mm -hmm. care for it like a doll, even though it's just a block of wood. Uh -huh. um, and the males, juveniles, do not do that. And if you give the female chimps a doll, a, a teddy bear or a doll or a chimp doll, whatever, they will definitely care for that. And then they will share it with their compatriots because chimps essentially have friendships. And they will become extraordinarily upset if the people that, or the chimpanzees that they're associating with don't take proper care of the doll. If you give a doll to a juvenile male, he'll tear it apart to see what it's made of. And so, and so that it's the infantile, it's the projection of the infant onto the block of wood that's particularly interesting to me because one of the things I see happening, I would say on a broad scale level in our society, this is perhaps where this will, might get somewhat contentious, is that I think with that, with the feminine ethos that's centered on infant care, which is an extraordinarily important thing to be centered on given the dependency of our infants. Imagine the world is sort of divided into three parts. There's infants, there's infant caregivers, and there's predators. And so infants can do no wrong. Infant caregivers are motivated by the highest and noblest of motivations, which is essentially a, an all-encompassing empathy. And anyone who isn't either of those two things is to be regarded with severe suspicion. Mm -hmm. And the, that's a very good ethos if you're dealing with infants, but it's a very bad ethos if you're dealing with, well, larger scale social organizations. And I see, I was reading these guidelines for faculty members at Mount Royal College in Calgary and uh, for a faculty retreat, you know, which is really not one of the world's most dangerous uh, uh, what would you say happen happenings yes and all of the faculty members were assured that trained counselors would be at hand in case the discussion became intense beyond the point of tolerability and i thought what's going on here it's like well the faculty members are infants and those who oppose their ideas are predators and the appropriate moral ethos is to care for the infants and it's like well yeah except no because they're not infants and this is not mother and baby and this is also, to me, it's also an extension of the Freudian nightmare, the Oedipal nightmare that produces both dependency and narcissism as a consequence of the overextension, the unregulated overextension of that essential ethos directed at infants. Well, the proper role of a father, and a mother as well, although the roles aren't identical, I would say the, the proper fundamental maternal role is one of protection. And the reason for that is quite obvious, is that newborn infants need above all to be protected the proper response to an infant's distress is you're right and i'll take care of you right now especially for the first nine months of life there's no disputing that whenever the infant is upset he or she needs to be dealt with as if that upset is justified yeah. but then as the infant matures and even by the age of nine months i would say then that that has to be that 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 interaction has to be made more sophisticated because the child has to be encouraged to take his or her place in the world and i would say that encouragement is more on the masculine side of the of the of the duty distribution and the father's fundamental role is to produce a bounded environment in which exploration can take place with an eye towards the encouragement of the child to develop more and more competence to push that development because, and it's true for mothers and fathers, that the end goal is to produce a person who's capable of operating autonomously in the world. 
The father's role is to foster that sense of confident autonomy by by encouraging the child to push his or her limits. Mm -hmm. And like that role can be played by mother or father. If it's a masculine role, it doesn't have to be played by a man, but it's it still tilts in that direction. And so, for example, fathers are much more likely to engage in rough and tumble play with their kids, which is very, very good for them, by the way, and absolutely necessary and something to be completely encouraged. Rough and tumble play, uh, yes. that is just fooling wrestling, around, wrestling. wrestling yeah. yeah, wrestling, physical play, because the kids learn, well, they learn all sorts of things. It's like they learn to dance. That's mm -hmm. the best way of thinking about it, because a confident child understands the physics of play. And you can see this even in such simple things as going into a park where there's a lot of dogs. And the dogs that are well socialized are very good at acting out playfulness. And you can tell the difference between a growling dog and a mean dog and a, and a frightened dog and a playful dog. People are very good at making that distinction. Mm. And a playful dog knows how to move in a playful manner. And so does a playful child. And that attentive readiness to play is something that's fostered by those play fight interactions with fathers, for example. And that makes the kid ready in a deep sense to engage with other children. And it also sets the stage for a, for a confident physicality in, ad, in, in adolescence and in sexual relationships. I mean, really? and, and so, yeah, because a lot of our wisdom is embodied. When you, when you wrestle with kids, then they learn what hurts them and what doesn't. They learn how far they can be extended and stretched. They test the they, limits. They test the limits. They learn to trust because you throw kids up in the air and you catch them and you push them to the point where they're really excited. So they're right on the edge of fear, actually. The excitement pushes right to the edge of fear. Mm -hmm. and But they learn. And then they also learn how they can interact with someone else physically and what's acceptable and where the limits of pain are and what's frightening and what can be sustained and how to take turns and all of that. And that's it's not abstract, it's concrete, it's right in the body. Mm -hmm. And so so that's part of the father's role, but the fundamental paternal role is that of encouragement. And the encouragement is, you can handle it, kid. Life is hard, it's gonna come at you in all sorts of ways. You can accept that as a challenge, you can thrive, you can master it, and I'm behind you. Like I'm behind the, the best in you manifesting itself in the world. And that gives a kid a spine, you know, mm -hmm. metaphysically and mm -hmm. physically. And so it's an unbelievably important thing to do. And fatherlessness is a catastrophe. Yeah. Like if you look at the epidemiological literature, the psychological literature, fatherlessness predicts all sorts of terrible outcomes. It's not good. And we've fallen into this idea in our society that fathers aren't necessary. It's like, and it's just a family that's run by single mother is just as good in, in the broad sense as a family with two parents. And it's simply not true.